Oh, hello there. I suppose you're wondering what I'm doing here. Well, I'm about to sit down to play a game of... Dungeon Saga Origins! Glimmer of Greed! Yes, this is the second campaign. I'm going to try and go through every single mission of this uh, using the... AI Overlord. I was going to say the digital app, but the digital app is not out. It's currently February, and I am, uh, yeah, I'm just recording this now, so the uh, the app is not been updated. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going from what's in the in the book. So chances are I'm going to uh, know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I'll know where to go, who to fight, who to kill, and uh, also I get to try some new enemy types out, some goblins. Last time it's all undead. This time it's all goblins. So join the table as I play Glimmer of Greed. <laughs> Before we begin, let me tell you the story of Glimmer of Greed. So last time our adventurers basically went off and they found the map which will lead them to um, to the main bad guy, which doesn't actually happen in this uh, Dungeon Saga Origins. That happens in the Dungeon Saga, the original game, not Origins, um, which yeah is no longer available, but you can pick it up secondhand from various different places. Um, so yes, yeah, so this time, what's happening? What are our heroes doing? Well, uh, when I filmed this, I didn't actually sit down and read out everything because I probably thought, oh, it, you know, I'll do that after the fact. This is after the fact. So uh, this is me reading you what the introduction for Glimmer and Greed campaign is. So uh, bear with me. It's got a lovely lot of textury here. So you can skip past this if you like, guys. If you just want to know what it is, uh, we're trying to find a sword. That's all we're trying to do. If that's all you need to know, skip through the gameplay. If you want to hear all the narrative and me putting on an accent, then uh, stay tuned for this bit. I'll wait to see if, uh, you know, if you're going to stay. You stayed. Introduction. The party of heroic companions sat around a tavern table in the warm glow of a crackling fire. Their flask of honeydew mead was now empty, and none had the coin to fetch another. As the last droplets of mead fell from their sturdy tumblers, an older man, face hidden by his hood and dressed in sweeping robes, approached the table. There's more of that honeydew behind the bar if you aren't pinched for pennies, he chimed. What we wouldn't all do for a little more coin in our pockets, eh? The voice was familiar. As the man pulled back his hood to reveal his face in the light of the fire, the heroes recognised him. It was Master Ranvus, advisor to Balazar, hegemon of Basli Baslia, and friend of the heroes after setting them on their successful quest to Durek's Hold and the encounter with a tyrant troll. It's good to see you, my friends, he exclaimed. Now that we are reacquainted, I shall rephrase my original question. What would you be willing to do for a little more coin? Hopefully he's not asking us to follow him into the bathroom. Ramvus gently pulled over a stool, collected up his robes and sat down softly. Let me tell you a story, he said with a grin. A story of wealth and good fortune. So much good fortune, in fact, that it was said that it could breed fortune itself. And this is not some tale of merchant schemes or dark arts and dreams. No, this is a tale that involves an item much more solid and trustworthy the likes of you and I would all agree. A sword. A fine sword with a gilded gold hilt and a shimmering edge that was known to be the forefathers of the dwarves as Glimmerdrake, but which we would call the Dragon Horde Blade. Well, this sword crafted in the forges of the Helpy Mountains aeons ago helped an ancient dwarf king named Furia the Fearless win many wars, slay the black dragon Benacor to claim its gold hoard and build one of the early and most prosperous dwarf realms. But as with much in life, it was not to last. With the coming of winter and the great flood that followed her defeat, Furin's realm was drowned and left in ruin, and some things that were lost were then forgotten. As time has passed, the waters have subsided, revealing secret passages that were once hidden underwater. And many are the races that dig and explore where legends once were, not least of all, the devious goblins. I have heard rumours from Valentica in the west that a crazed goblin lord, Bigot, is how they title themselves, by the name of Brukro Grimshank, has taken over an old fortress in the southern west edge of Dragon Teeth Mountains. 
Many of the rumours tell that he is seeking the famed Glimmerdrake sword to put it to new use. He is terrorising the local lands and has already gathered himself a fortune fit for a king. And that is his ultimate aim. He wants to crown himself King of the Goblins and build their race a second northern capital city. It will mirror their current capital in the south, called Glimmer. The ancient blade is the next part of his plans toward his grand design. My request, and it is the wish of the hegemon and the council of Panitor, is for you to travel to the edge of the successor kingdoms, find this so-called bigot, and stop him from his greedy goal of the Glimmer Drake and a new goblin kingdom. And that, friends, is where we join the adventurers now. <laughs> Adventure 1. Goblins in the Pantry A strange smell danced on the air as the heroes approached the aged wooden door on the outer arm of the bastion that they'd chosen to enter from. Something awful was cooking, but what it was and who exactly was doing the cooking they were about to find out, if they were to make it deeper into the Great Keep. So, we are going to be going up against some goblins, guys. This is uh, going to be different to the undead. These guys uh, will be... Yeah, well, t tricky and sneaky, I imagine. So, um, our objective is we have to find the stairwell to the next level marked with a star. The Overlord can place two traps on the squares indicated on the map, which I have done at random. We have a new type of trap come out as well called a booby trap. And I will, uh, if we trigger one of those, I'll explain what that is as and when we do it. Uh, the exploration deck is Mahusiv. The exploration deck is combined with a core set and the uh, Glimmer of Greed stuff. The equipment deck, uh, anything I haven't already claimed, um, gets added together with all the other um, Glimmer of Greed stuff that's in here. Now, before we actually begin this adventure, I did have the option to level up, well, buy boons or buy equipment, but I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm just going straight into it. These guys aren't taking a rest. They're coming straight into uh, fighting from the, the zombie troll tyrant into facing off against a bunch of green goblins. Not the Norman Osborn kind. So there's some special rules for this, which I think are quite fun. Goblin Gruel. When a room with a table is explored, but before a hero draws an exploration card, that hero must roll two dice. On the score of one on either dice, the hero has mid on the score of one on either dice, the hero has stumbled into the pots of goblin food being cooked and knocks it over. Each hero in the room suffers a two dice fight attack as a steaming stew spills across the floor. An exploration card may be drawn for the room as normal after these food attacks are resolved. The Overlord mode is passive. So let us begin with our descent into the Glimmer of Greed. Uh, so let's talk about our characters. We have Saulian of Tarkis, our human paladin. He has a Helm of Battle, which allows him to roll a single die when he suffers damage from an attack. On a score of six, the damage is ignored. He has the Great Axe. Weapon allows you to treat all enemy armor as one less than it would otherwise be when attacking in a fight. And he also has the Thief's Shoes. After a move, the player with sight may roll a die on a score of four or more. They may move another two spaces. We have the Feet Divine Fury. So uh, use this card as a fight action for any dice are rolled and then discard it. Target up to two monsters adjacent to the hero model, including those in the rear arc, and make a normal fight against each target. He also has Exaltation, which is basically he can prep this for ne next time he fights. He gets a plus two dice to his fight attack. Uh, he also has the well-drilled um, boon, so it can add a uh, add one to a dice value. He has his Aura of Faith. Once per game, Solia may reroll one defense die for any adjacent friendly model. He can't equip armor and guard types, which I'm just double-checking. He doesn't have those, which is good. And uh, he can select the one divinity spell, which we've already gone through. So next we have Madriga, our elf. Madriga has the Hail of Arrows. Uh, so she can use this card as a shoot action for any dice are rolled. And she basically gets to do three shoot attacks, which is fantastic. She also has the Caress of Dureg. Um, armor's increased by one. And once per round, they can count every adjacent square as part of their front arc when making a defense roll. Magic also has Sure Shot, which I've never really been able to use in a good way. Essentially what it means is uh, we get to reroll one of her dice when making a shoot action, and I normally just roll the exact same value again. Next we have a Deris of Wolf March, our human monk. He has three special prayers. Uh, one gives him plus two armor, one gives plus two health, and one gives plus two combat. He can cast them on himself or somebody else. 
He has the Fist of Iron Feet, which is fantastic. He gets to basically do several attacks um, to anyone adjacent. First attack uses five dice, and then each subsequent one is reduced by one. He has the Iron Shield. Um, Reroll one of your enemy's attack dice when they fight or shoot you. The Great Hammer. Um, this weapon allows you to reroll one of your enemy's defense dice in a fight. And the Glade Sponge Shirt, a hero with an armor value of two or less, increase the armor by plus one. So his armor is now two. And last but not least is Jane Clement, our human cleric. Oh, I forgot to say, Hedaris of Wolf March also has a healing hymn. Once per game, Hedaris can recover one health on a friendly model within five squares. And once per game, Hedaris can suffer two damage to retake a discarded prayer card, something we've never used before. And finally, we have Jane Clement, the human cleric. She has divine will. Once per game, Jane can re up to two enemy attack dice rolled against an adjacent friendly model. She also has a relic, which is the uh, Talon of Colossi. When used, you can add plus one to a fight or shoot attack. Also has redemption, so she can heal uh, two health to herself or somebody else. Righteous Steel. Move up to four squares and make a four dice fight attack as normal. But we don't have to worry about any... Um, any attacks of opportunity from that. Mail coat, we can re-roll our defense dice. And Stormbreaker, um, a hero with a fight value of three or more treats all enemy armor as two less than it would otherwise be. So uh, let us begin. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And she's going to move there for six and attempt to shoot. So what do we have? He, she's going to be attacking the Goblin Rabble, which is the guy with the shield. So they've got a combat of two, a speed of five, a defense of two. So we need threes or above to hit. Green Swarm wins. Model makes a fight attack. The target model armor is reduced by one for each Goblin Rabble, Sharp Stick or Spitter model adjacent to the target. And we need two to damage it. Two hits to actually do damage to this guy. So her shoot action is four. Wish me luck. Okay, so um, the armor is two. So that is a feeble attack. It's rolling two defense. Okay, so the six takes out the five, but the five takes out the four. So two hits, we have our very first casualty. And we try and do an interrupt, but we can't do an interrupt because we have nothing in the um, in the discard, the expiration discard deck. So that's as good as we're going to get. So we're going to go for Sorlia next. One, two, three, four, five. Sorlia can't search uh, there because we have a monster on the same space. We're going to get uh, Hedaris to go next. One, two, three, four, five. And then Jane's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and Jane is going to search. And she finds a scroll of pausing. This is one of the first um, Glimmer Agreed cards here. So we've got a little icon up there. Uh, target must be visible until the end of the round. The target may not take any actions. May be cast by any hero who holds it. Turn this card and use it at any time. Discard after use. Okay, so we're now on to the Overlord's turn. And we have a look at the Swarm. Perform strongest available distance attack, then take maximum movement towards supporting friendly model per target priority. Now we have a, this is a Goblin Sharp Stick. Uh, so long reach, can attack from one square further away than normal and has the same ability as the uh, previous one. So we can move... I'd say if we move there, two spaces there, and they can attack our lady Madriga. So it's two dice. Four and a three. Their armor is currently three because of the caress of Durag. So that's a feeble attack. And she has three combat. Yep, the six beats the four. Okay, on to the next round. We're going to start with Magica. Magica is going to try and shoot. 
So five, five, a two and a two. We're gonna use her short shot to reroll one of these. Always the same, it, it never works. Okay, let's see. It's okay, it was enough. That's one dead sharp stick. Uh, she's then gonna open up this door for a first movement point. And we have our very first goblin spitter up here. Um, so it's got a only got an armor of one, so you just need two or more to hit, but a damage target of two still. Two combats. Uh, it's got three shoot though, so we'll see how they get on. She's gonna go two, three. We can't do an interrupt because we don't have any expiration cards in the discard pile. So Saurian's gonna go next. He's gonna go one, two, and Saurian's gonna attempt to take out this guy. Saurian has a fight of three. And uh, the armor for the Goblin Shark Stick is currently one due to our Great Axe. So two or mores will do damage. So we've got two hits there. Unfortunately, it is blocked. Okay, uh, Hedaris is going to... No, we're going we're gonna to go and get Jane, um, Jane to come out next. One, two, three, four, five. So Jane is going to attempt to attack. So it's three dice and we reduce the armor down to one. So once again, blocked. Okay, and then we've got Hedaris. So Hedaris is going to go one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna get all up in this guy's face and he's gonna to attempt to punch him to death. So six, a three, and a one. One is feeble. Five and a two, so that spitter has spat its last spit. Right, so we're now onto the Overlord's turn. I'm gonna turn this back over to this side and we have our Got Goblin Sharps to go there here, going to attack Jane. So the Sharp Stick has got a combat two. Both of those are feeble attacks. Okay, we're gonna start with Jane at this time. So Jane is going to try to smash this guy. No, he's blocking this. Um, then we're gonna get Sorley in to give it a go. Okay, Sorley managed to do it. So, bang, this guy is gone. So, then we're gonna go uh, one, two, open the door. For his third action, he's got two movement points left. So, he's going to go one, Two. And it's worth noting we have a spawn point up here which becomes active from this point onward. So going forward, we are going to be uh, activating this spawn point at the start of every round. And guys, it has been a while since I played this. Um, I feel like maybe I maybe I didn't play uh, it correctly with uh, having a uh, a spawn going around following them. Let me know in the comments below if that's the case. Okay, so um feel like Magicka doesn't really have anything, so Magic's gonna do a search. Uh so we're gonna get her to just move next to the bookcase and then she's gonna search. And we have our very first marauding monster. Hero's turn ends immediately. The overlord may place one marauding monster model uh, in any square adjacent to or within five squares of the exploring hero. It can then attack, so it's going to attack uh, Magicka. Four and a three. The three is feeble. But the four might do some damage. She's only rolled two dice because she is in a in the rear. 
but she's going to use her Corrasive Dregs ability, which basically means she can count this guy as being in her um, in her front arc. So she gets to roll all three of those. So yeah, so she got a three, a six, and a two. So she managed to block that attack. Now the Overlord is rolling a dice, and he got a two. If I got a five or more, then we would have placed an additional monster. Now, I believe that um, that is the end of Magicka's go now. But... Hadera still gets to go because it says the hero's turn. I believe that means the specific hero that did this as opposed to the heroes as a whole. Okay, so we're going to get um, Hadera to move one space. And he's going to try and punch this guy. Five, a three, and a two. So two is feeble. And it blocks the other one. Okay, so on to the Overlord player's turn. Um, we are, of course, going to activate... We've got to do the one that's first away first. So we'll go for this one first. So he's attacking Saurian. Feeble attacks. This guy's attacking... Whoop. Madriga, double fives. Now, he is in her rear arc this turn, so she doesn't get to roll as much. She takes our very first point of damage. First blood. Okay, and now we have a spawn point that is on the board and is revealed. So, we are going to start spawning stuff. And we have a ton of incentive to start searching because the only card in the uh, Expiration Discard deck is an interrupt so it means so we're going to be interrupting after every hero's turn uh so this isn't good so we start with Saulian. Saulian's in the uh most precarious position i believe so he is going to attack this character here four or three the one is feeble six and a one so unfortunately that is going to uh yeah unfortunately that's that's Go straight through, so no damage. Okay, uh, we can we interrupt? Well, we're on the aggressive mood because we didn't attack and we didn't manage to kill the monster outright. So um, can we interrupt? Yes, we can because there is only one card and it has an interrupt token. So interrupt symbol. Okay, and it makes more sense for us to activate this guy to attack Magicka. So we're going to do that. We're going to do things worse for the heroes. So... One and a two. That's fine. Uh, she'll roll. She would have blocked it anyway. So we don't use an interrupt token for that because we didn't manage to actually um, do enough damage to kill it. Right. We're going to go for Hedaris next. Hedaris is going to try to attack this guy. Six and two ones. No point carrying on rolling that because... We are going to, um, yeah, that we could only get one damage through and that wouldn't be enough to kill it. So uh, we try to interrupt again. We definitely can interrupt. So this guy is going to keep activating until we kill it or um, it's the end of the go. So he's attacking. Uh, we're going to say use our Caress of Durag for this. So um, he's currently in her front arc. Four, two and a two. It's going to be another damage. Okay, so we're going to go for Madriga next. Madriga is going to turn to face this monster as her movement, and then she's going to try to punch him. It's nice. And it's enough. So if you want something doing, do it right. Do it yourself. Uh, now, because that was a damage, we did actually get to use one of our interrupt tokens. That interrupt token is gone. And the Overlord was back into a passive mood. Um, Magic going to move two spaces there. Okay, Jane. We're going to get Jane to... Um, she's going to come out one, two. And she's going to try and punch this guy. Okay, so we've got a five, a two, and a three there. All of those go through. And the three and the two 
are blocked. So the three and the two aren't blocked, they go through, he dead. Okay, uh, that's the end of the hero's turn. So this guy activates. And come behind Sorty in there. Five and a two. The two is a feeble attack. Okay, so that damage is going to come through, but we can use the Helm of Battle. If we get a six, we ignore it. We got a two, so we don't ignore it. We take a damage from uh, that, unless unless we use our Well Drilled. We're going to use our Well Drilled to make that a five, so we ignore that hit coming through. His boon is gone, and it worked out okay for us. To start of a new round, we're going to be placing a new monster there, and that's we're just going to keep keep spawning those guys. Okay, this room has been searched. The rain is coming down. Okay, we're going to get Sully in to activate. He's turn around for his movement, and then he's going to swing at this guy. Six, a five, and a four. That's not bad. Five and a one. So, yeah, we've killed another orc. With a goblin, even. Um, it's then going to be Jane's turn. So, Jane is going to... Jane's going to come out. One, two, three. I'm going to reveal what this is. It's an ink. Four. And she's going to attack this goblin. Six, four, and a two. They're all coming through. One less goblin to worry about in the world. Okay. Adaris is going to go next. One, two, three, four, five. And Hedaris is going to use his... Gift of Grace to give Magicka two health back. Then it's Magicka's go. One, two, three, four, five, and she'll stay there. Uh, it's the start of a new round, so we're going to be spawning a new monster right there. And there's Heroes Go. So we're going to start with Jane. Six and a three. Six and a five, so our Overlord is not very happy about that. We're in the aggressive mood. We're going to try to fight back with that monster. One and a two, they are both feeble attacks. Okay, we're going to get Jane. I believe Jane has got line of sight, so she's going to try and shoot this guy. Five and a three. Six and a two. Okay, so once again, it is going to try to attack Jane. Can we do a check for an interrupt? Five and a three. The um, three is soaked up. It's a feeble attack. And we can use the chain mail coat to reroll this. She takes the damage. We have used our first... Interrupt of the round. So that guy can't, I can't interrupt again. That's my understanding. Okay, uh, Solian's going to come through. One, two. Four, six, and a one. Two and a one. Deado. Hedaris, one, two, three, four, five. He's facing that way. End of round, no monsters, but we are going to be spawning another guy back here. It's going to keep going, guys. Okay, so um, we're going to start with... Start with Jane. So Jane's going to try and punch this guy. All of those going through. Yep, dead. Then she's gonna go one, two, open the door for three. And we're in a aggressive mood now. Uh, Jane is going to then move there. Gonna check for an interrupt. We definitely can interrupt. So we're going to move this guy one space forward 
Um, you can't quite see behind the door there, but we've got a, uh, a sharp stick guy there. Now, because we have got a, another goblin that is adjacent to Jane, her armor is reduced by one. So her armor is currently two. Now it attacks with its long, sharp stick. No worry there from Jane. Okay, we're going to get the Darius to come in. One, actually no. Let's get uh, let's get Magica. One, two, three, four. Magica going to try and shoot the sharp stick. A six, a five. One, a three. Boom gone uh, then we're going to check for an interrupt which we can always do so the goblin over here so that goblin is going to attempt to attack Jane six and a one she takes another damage but she can re-roll one of her defense dice using her male coat. Yeah, she takes the damage. And that's another one of these interrupts used. Okay, Saulian now. One, two, three. Five and a three blocks it. And then Hedaris is going to... Hedaris is going to explore. And he finds a jackpot, 100 gold. Well done. Jackpot, baby. Yeah. And he's not going to move because we are going to be spawning a new monster at the beginning of next turn. Well, actually, it's the beginning of next turn. So he will move as well. So he'll go one, two, three... And open the door for... Okay, so the Overlord's turn. Now, as far as I'm aware, because we already activated that monster this round, we can't activate it again. So we go to the next round. A new marauding monster comes out, and guess what? It is a goblin rabble. A rabble rouser. So Jane is going to try to uh, beat this guy up. Six, a four, and a two. They're all going through at the moment. Yep, so boom. That guy is dead. Then she'll go one, two, three, four. Let's move back one. She'll stay there. Okay, Saulian's going to go next. He's going to be one, two, and then he's going to try and attack this guy. Okay, they're all going to go through. A five, a three, and a three just there, guys. And we've got a four and a four, so one of those threes gone. This four is blocked by the five up there. Boom. Another dead oak. Okay, so we're going to get Magica to go next. One, two, three. Open the door for four. And then she's going to move in and we're going to use her Hail of Arrows. So hopefully this is going to um, work out for us. We basically get to do three attacks using all of our dice to hopefully uh, destroy these guys before they get to do an interrupt because we know but they'll definitely be able to interrupt on this and try and beat her up. So our first attack. So we're gonna attack the archer with that. So it blocks uh, one of those, it blocks that. So that was a feeble, pretty bad one. She's gonna attack again. 
All of those go through. Uh, we're going to go against the Goblin Sharp Stick for this one. And then for a final attack, So all four of those going through as well, because their armor is only one. Um, so yeah, we've taken out that guy as well. What a Madriga. That's a great use of her feet. Okay, Hedera's next. Uh, so one, two. Then he's going to use his uh, healing him to recover one health to Jane. And that's the end of the round. So we're going to be spawning a new guy there. The start of next round. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, open the door for three. Now we've got our new treasure tiles. Now the treasure tiles work. You can't explore any of the room um, until you've gone adjacent to one of those and started searching it. So we are going to, yeah, potentially have some, um, some cool equipment or some marauding monsters here. So she's going to move one extra space and then she's going to attack. Okay, there's three hits. Blocks one, the other two go through. That guy's gone, but we check for an over. -up. Over. So we check for an interrupt and we do have one. Double threes, but do you know what? It's fine. Her armor is three, so they are just glanced off of her. Uh, we're gonna go for Hadaris next. One, two, three, four, and Hadaris is gonna try and beat this guy up. And we're going to use the Great Hammer to reroll one of these. Amazing. So the Great Hammer manages to take out that guy. We check for an interrupt. We don't have an interrupt because it's a jackpot. So we go to Saulian. Saulian is going to try and take out that monster and then move. Six, six and a four is pretty good. Beats a five and a four, so... Another guy gone. Then he's going to move one, two, three. Then Jane is going to come in. One, two, three, four, five. She's adjacent to that, so she's going to explore. So we have two cards from the exploration deck come out. The first one is an elixir of acceleration. Hero intends card and used at any time. When used, the card is discarded, and the hero can immediately move three extra spaces. And we have a Marauding Monster. So it's going to attack. But we blocked it. And we're on to, uh, we'll see if there's another one appears. Another one doesn't appear. We're on to uh, the adversary's turn. So it's going to try and attack again. Oof, that's a good one. Not as good as that though, we managed to block it. Okay, um, Jane's gonna go first. And Jane's gonna use her feet, Righteous Strike, which gives her an additional four, well, four dice to use to attack. Hopefully this is enough to kill this guy. Oof, only two of those go through. And yeah, we uh, it's blocked, so we're aggressive. We check for interrupt, which we definitely will have. One, two, three, four. Do you know what? Actually, no. I thought he's had his back to it, but it makes more sense for them to keep attacking Jane. She's got the lowest hit points. So she's going to re-roll one of her dice. 
nice uh, using her male coat so she blocks that. Adaris is now going to try and punch it. Six a three and a two. Boom. He's then going to move one space over here. Now the reason I'm moving over there is because to search these piles you need two people adjacent. Well, first of all, we're going to move Saulian one, two, and then Saulian is going to search in there. So we check for an interrupt, which we can do. So we're going to so we act, activate this one. One, two, three. What's the speed? Five. Four, five. Uh, Surin's actually got his back to uh, this, even though he's been searching. So it's two dice. It's three dice, even. It's a pretty good roll as well. Worth noting though, Saudi's armor blocked these two. He's only rolled two dice because uh, the shooter is in his rear arc and he's able to avoid that, no problem. Then on to our lady. She's gonna move there and then she is going to search. And for the larger piles, you need two people adjacent. Oh, I didn't draw the next card for the search from the um, treasure pile for Jane. So you found a stash of gold. She can add 50. We're going to do that. Of course we're going to do that. And we roll a single die. We're fine. Okay, so now Madrigus searches. And she finds a battle potion. And small gems. 75 gold. Don't mind if I do. Okay, it's the end of the round, so no one's going to be checking for interrupts. We're just going to get into it. So, one, two, three, four, five. Can't quite reach anybody where he is. One, two, three, four, five. So, he's attacking Saulian. Five and a two. The two is feeble. And the six beats the five, so that is fine. Uh, the archer next, so the archer's going to move over here, and then they're going to try and attack uh, Saulian. Saulian is minus one to their armor because they have an adjacent character. So that four normally wouldn't go three, but it does this time. And he's only rolling two dice because the archer is in its rear arc. So, yeah, unfortunately, he takes the damage from that. Thus ends bad guy's turn. We get a new thing spawned there. But hopefully we can clear some of these guys out. Vidaris is going to go one, two, and then he's going to use his feet, a fist of iron, and make a separate fight against each monster model in your front arc. First attack uses five dice and then four and so forth. So we're going to go for the guy who is uh, with a big stick, big pointy stick. Okay, so we've got two sixes. And the rest of them, yeah, the rest of them uh, are soaked up, unfortunately. But, you know, it didn't matter. Boom, this guy's gone. Right, we're now rolling four dice for the archer, and the archer's armor is one, so twos or above will score hits. Sorry, you didn't quite see that. Um, yeah, we got a we got six and a two. The six takes the six away, and the four beats the two, so we got rid of the other one. Don't check for an interrupt because our overlord is currently passive. So we're going to get um, Jane to go. One, two, three, four, five. 
Uh, Madrika is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and then we're going to get Solian to attack this guy. Yikes. Check for an interrupt. Well, there's no point checking for an interrupt, sorry, because the, that's the last player's turn. So uh, we go for the back first. One, two, three, four, five. They're both in the front arc. So you get a six and a one. Solian's outnumbered, but he still managed to defend that. The other guy attacks Solian. Three and a one. Uh, his armor is now three, so they're, they're both feeble attacks. And start of a new round. So we have a passive Overlord. Let's put him up there. And we have another Goblin Rabble. Saulian is going to use his Divine Fury. Two monsters adjacent to the hero, uh, including those in the rear arc, and make a normal fight against each target. So he's going to be attacking both. Oof. Five and four. So the first guy's gone. We'll be able to sweep this last one. Six and two threes. That's pretty good. Will it be enough? It will be enough. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. I did realize I should have triggered that last round. Oh, last round was a booby trap. So how this works. Let's just say we just trigger this this minute. Um, so basically, we go to someone who is, it actually attacks Madruga instead. When a full trap is encountered and the entire is revealed, a booby trap, the overall determines the type of trap encounters normal, but instead applies effect to an alternate hero within four squares of the hero. So we have a five. So it is a falling rocks. And um, it's greater than or equal to their movements. They take one damage. And also they're stunned. And what stunned means is basically they only get to do either a move or an action this round. So that's gone. So sorry, that was Saudian's go was attack and move. We should have resolved that last round, the, uh, the uh, explosion. So um, we're going to get Jane to go one, open the door for two. And Three, four, five. Uh, we're going to go for an interrupt. So it's got to be somebody who can potentially hurt them. So we're going to get the archer to attack. Five and three and a three. The threes are soaked. And yep, she doesn't have to worry about the rest of those. Okay, uh, so Madriga will go after, well, Madriga last. So Hedaris, one, two, three, four, five. And then he's going to cast Sacred and Spirit onto Jane. So she gets a plus two to her armor value. So Jane's armor value, armor value now is five. And I should have checked for an interrupt last time. We, uh, we wouldn't have interrupted last time because we had a jackpot. Then we would check interrupt this time. We had an interrupt. That's when that archer would have gone. Sorry, guys. It's been a while since I've played this. So it's just getting used to the uh, the gameplay mechanics again. Uh, okay, so that was Hedaris. So then we go for Magica. She's got a movement of five. Sorry, six even. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we check for an in We don't check for an interrupt because the end of the round. So starting with the guy furthest away. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, brought the spawn point with me. I see. Uh, this guy next. One, and he's going to attack Jane. He got uh, snake eyes, so that doesn't do anything. The archer then attacks Jane. Uh, so... 
Only sixes will actually do any damage. There we go. She's going to re-roll um, using her mail coat. Yeah, she takes the damage. Okay, so new round. Just have to get to the stairs now. So we're going to move Sawley in. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to come over here. Uh, we're then going to get Madriga to shoot over this. So she's only rolling three dice. She just needs twos or mores to be able to do anything here. That is a pretty good roll. And yep, she's taken out this guy there. Um, and then Jane is going to attack. She's going to move in one. Four, two, and a one. So unfortunately... Oh no, they all go through because it... There are is currently one because of her uh, Stormbreaker. But it defends it, so we're on the aggressive side again. It's going to attack back. Both of those are soaked up. No, one of them goes through. Sorry, her arm is three. So she blocks it, though. And then Hedaris. One, two, three, and that's the end of his go. Okay, so enemy overlord activates. And then we've got this guy attacking Jane again. For a five and a two. And yes, she blocks it. So new round. New goblin rabble. Jane. Please finish this guy. She's going to chuck a Talon of Colossu into this to give her an additional dice to roll. Okay, six, six, four, and a four. Five and a one. We've killed that guy. She moves one, two, three. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, we're off. So uh, before we go to see Jeb's shiny and pointy things, we have decided to spend some experience points on getting the following. So Madriga, who had 14 experience points at this point, she just spent seven of those to grab herself. Feet Mastery, which means during the quest she can perform her second feat. And Saulian has spent five experience points to get the well-drilled ability one more time. I realised during the actual filming of the last episode that I'd used the wrong token. So apologies for that, guys. But that's the uh, boon status at the moment. Let's go and see Jeb. So let's see what we get. Is it going to be a basic trader, a local merchant, or an exotic caravan? It is going to be a local merchant. So it's going to be five equipment cards. Uh picked from here so i'm just going to shuffle these up so you know i've not stacked these in any way and my table shuffling means they will be put in exactly the same uh place they were before so we're going to get five of these so first one is one that we've not seen before smoke bombs select a target up to four squares away including adjacent to the hero target must be visible and suffers a two dice attack if at least one hit is scored the target cannot be activated by the overlord in their next turn the smoke bombs can be used twice Turn this card over after the first use, and then discard it after the second. So we can afford that, because we've actually got 445 gold pieces. We then have some throwing knives. This weapon allows you to shoot using two dice. The knives can be used twice. Turn this card over again and again and again and again. So it's a two dice attack for a shoot action. We can afford those. Then we have a Royal Halberd. The weapon allows you to fight two models in your front arc that are adjacent to each other. The attacks will use three combat dice each. If two valid targets are not available, you may fight one target and reduce the armor value by minus one. That is a thing of beauty. I really like the sound of that one. That is going to go on the... Yeah, let's put that to one side because that sounds pretty fun. Then we have another one. You did see me shuffle this, right, guys? If the heroes trigger a trap, this is the rogue's pouch. If the heroes trigger a trap, roll a die on a score of four or more. The trap is assigned; it does not go off. On any other result, it goes off as normal. Additionally, on the roll of a one, this card is discarded. 
So 250 gold, hmm, maybe. And finally, we have a trap kit. If the hero chooses a trap, roll a die on a score of five or more. The trap is disarmed and does not go off. So the rogue's pouch is slightly better than the uh, trap kit. So I'm sorry, guys. We're definitely picking up the royal halber. And we're going to give that to Hedaris. Uh, so that's fantastic. And that's going to cost us 225 gold, leaving us with 220 gold left. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, thanks for all the other stuff, Jeb, but we're not that interested in them. Uh, but we will come back another day for more loot. So that was Glimmer of Greed, the first mission. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was nice to get back into it. I think I might have played the spawn point wrong at some point. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I probably would have filmed at least two to three more episodes before I read these comments. Uh, so I'm going to get back to the book read up on the rule book before I play the next one and hopefully not make any mistakes at all. I did, however, get the wrong token out uh, for Well Drilled. I think it was the offensive one I'd got out. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I think this is a pretty fun mission. It's a shame I didn't get to use any, I didn't search any rooms with tables in them to uh, to actually trigger the, um, the kind of all the hot food and stuff. Um, the kind of theme of that was a bit lost to me. Playing this with the guys, though, I can really imagine um, knowing that this is a pantry that I would be um, basically like really laying on thick about the descriptiveness of the rooms and the smells they can have. This room smells of carrots, that kind of thing. Uh, so this could be pretty fun to play with a group. Um, but our solo, it was fine. I've been the Ever Exile of Adam. Uh, until next time, guys, stay safe or die rolling.